I don't know. They might have come close to exposing the core. If that's true, then we came very close to the China syndrome. The what? If the core is exposed, for whatever reason, the fuel heats beyond core heat tolerance in a matter of minutes. Nothing can stop it. And it melts right down through the bottom of the plant, theoretically, to China. But of course, as soon as it hits groundwater, it blasts into the atmosphere and sends out clouds of radioactivity. The number of people killed would depend on which way the wind is blowing. Render an area the size of Pennsylvania permanently uninhabitable, not to mention the cancer that would show up later. Well, this week marks the anniversary of the atomic catastrophes on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. Today, Japanese attention turns to other nuclear concerns. Tensions in Japan are rising over the radioactive water leaking into the Pacific Ocean from the country's crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, which was devastated by the earthquakes and tsunami of 2011. Joining me now in studio to discuss the radioactive leak is Paul Gunter, director of the Reactor Oversight Project at BeyondNuclear.org. Thank you for being here, Paul. We really Thank you very your much. Presence. Now, I'm going to start off by asking you, can you tell us how long the contaminated water has been, how long the contamination has been leaking into the water? Very likely since the uh, explosions and the meltdown at uh, Fukushima Daiichi in March of uh, 2011. Wow, that, that is quite a long time. Now, how much and what sort of radiation is leaking into the Pacific? I know there's all different types, so if you can explain that right. in a little detail. Well, clearly what we've seen now is the movement of radioactive hydrogen, tritium, uh, which uh, is a uh, mobile uh, radioactive isotope, but clearly um, radioactive cesium-134, 137, strontium-90. We're seeing a full range of radioactive contaminants now moving, which indicate that uh, the damaged cores of these reactors, the meltdowns themselves, uh, have, are now contributing to the contamination of the Pacific Ocean and groundwater that's moving at a, about a, a rate of a 300 to 400 gal, uh, uh, metric tons uh, per day. So, but these uh, numbers are really um, only approximations and will vary, but clearly a lot of radioactivity is moving through groundwater into the ocean. Now, why is the plan continuing to leak? You'd think they would have, or maybe they already have, taken steps to contaminate some of this leakage. Well, they, um, they have, you know, TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Power Company, put up a temporary wall between the uh, reactor wreckage and the, uh, the ocean. But uh, this has really acted no nothing more than just like a dam, so that the water is building up behind the dam, and now it's breached the dam, it's spilling over, and the radioactive contamination is moving into the Pacific. But um, it's, uh, you know, right now we're seeing the, the Japanese government is in chaos. Uh, this, the fact that the revelation of this extensive contamination is coming now more than two years after the accident occurred uh, indicates that it's completely out of control. Mm -hmm. And uh, the command and control uh, is in chaos in Japan right now. And, and really, the big question is, why aren't they calling international aid to address the radioactive contamination of the Pacific Ocean? Why do you suspect they aren't calling international aid? The, the problems are, I think, clearly that uh, there's, there's no transparency. And the government and the industry, as documented by the Japanese Diet, their Congress, is that there's been a collusion all along. And uh, so what we're seeing is a veil being drawn over the accident to, to uh, promote an agenda for continue the restart of these reactors in Japan and uh, to try to contain uh, the uh, bad news rather than the radiation. That's very concerning because the radiation is much worse than just the news itself. Now, what can be done beyond these dams that you mentioned before in terms of contaminating the leakage? Well, the, the, you know, in order to contain the leaks, we have to isolate the radioactive waste. But indications are right now that the reactor structures themselves have been breached. Uh, it's very likely that the, um, some of the radioactive material, the melted cores, have moved into the earth. And the, uh, the, so the containing, it's beyond containment right now. I think that's the tragedy uh, that we see unfolding as Fukushima's radioactive water crisis is only beginning.
That's very concerning. How far has this radiation spread, and how fast is it going while it spreads? Again, some of the radioactive isotopes are more mobile than others. The radioactive tritium, uh -huh. uh, the hydrogen, it moves anywhere water goes because it is radioactive hydrogen and, and makes up a component of water. So um, the, the spread of the contamination is only going to be as effectively monitored as the technology is out there. And frankly, we don't know the full extent. Uh, and nobody really knows the full extent of the contamination at this point as it moves through uh, not only groundwater but also through the atmosphere and into ocean currents. So um, it, it's, we're in a very grave situation right now as the, uh, the Japanese government has uh, declared this is a new radiation emergency coming out of a worsening situation at Fukushima Daiichi. Now what does this mean for the people of Japan and around the world? I think that certainly the concern right now is that the people of Japan want more transparency mm -hmm. into what their government is or is not doing about this uncontrolled radioactive catastrophe. Uh, the meetings that are going on right now between industry and government are behind closed doors. So the Japanese people are asking for more transparency to, uh, to get a better understanding of just how un out of control this whole situation is. And that's going to be true for New Zealand, for Taiwan, for Korea, for China, uh, for all the, the, uh, the immediate Pacific nations, but ultimately it raises concerns for radi radioactive contamination in the uh, ocean currents in the Pacific. Well, very concerning. We appreciate your insight into this. Thank you for joining me here today. Thank you. That was Paul Guncher, director of the Reactor Oversight Project for BeyondNuclear.org. If the core is exposed, for whatever reason, the fuel heats beyond core heat tolerance in a matter of minutes. Nothing can stop it. And it melts right down through the bottom of the plant, theoretically, to China. But, of course, as soon as it hits groundwater, it blasts into the atmosphere and sends out clouds of radioactivity. The number of people killed would depend on which way the wind is blowing. Render an area the size of Pennsylvania permanently uninhabitable, not to mention the cancer that would show up later.